All right, so basically we're um, just drawing uh, this lot down here. And that's lot 2A. <laughs> and here's lot 2B, this, this piece here. So, um, yeah, so although we would draw this line because that helps us locate this point from which we can get this point, um, otherwise, um, yeah, there's no way to know what's going on here. So, all right. Back to here. Okay. So what we did just to summarize, I uh, well not summarize. Let's just pick up where we left off, kind of thing. Um, for some reason, maybe I didn't save my map. <laughs> that wasn't very smart. We had um, the the PLSS data, the the section corners and everything. And we got that from the class data folder, I think. Yeah. Did I put it in the chapter four? Yeah, it was called sections. It's after all these. I gotta get rid of those. And then I'll just make the fill color no color so I can see what's going on. And it was this corner we identified, right? So it was between 34, 35. So there's 35, that's 34, that's two and three, or three and two. So it was this corner. And then we drew from there. And I think I have that somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have it in my geodatabase here. Yeah, there we go. So um, you can draw that line in if you want or leave it out. It's, it's all good. So there were a couple things. Yeah, so we'll give you time to um, finish that up and then we'll talk about uh, what we're gonna do with it afterward, after we're done drawing them. So let's go to that point anyway. After we get it drawn, what we would want to do is, so I have this drawn and I've saved all my edits and it's, this is actually, if I go to my table of contents here, I can see where it's being stored. It's in my geo database, right? Um, that's not a shape file, it's a feature class. So as we kind of talked about when we first made it, so um, what we'll need to do is go back here, here it is, and we can export it out as a shape file. So feature class is a shape file. So drawing it in here um, has some advantages actually. If I open up the attribute table here, and dock it up here where it should go all the time, um, it tells you the length of the um, of each line, right? So you can kind of check. Now I've added some other columns here, um, such as the distance and direction, which tells that it's length also and stuff. But and also the direction, just to check a few things. And so here's that line that has a north. So that guy's probably the north line, right? So that has is due north. So um, anyway, this is an azimuth. Um, that, that's all good. So at least um, it has some other, you know, it adds a column there for you to um, tell its length and everything. So when I um, export it out, it will have that. Shape files won't do that naturally for you. So environments, make sure the output coordinate system is that state plane and we'll name it. We'll put it in the folder that you're looking for. Yeah. And um, name it the same thing or export something like that one and then run it. And just to take it, the, the final step would be uh, to take a look at it in Windows. And in, in Windows here, I have, I should see um, the shapefile down here. There it is. So 
um, look at all the files. <laughs> SJC lots export, the CPG, the DBF, the PRJ, the SVN, the SPX, the SHP, which you absolutely have to have. And then uh, these are just lock files, which who cares? And then um, you can get those. So these guys, well, the lock is for uh, because it's open in ArcGIS, right? So it doesn't allow you to do anything with them while, you're, while it's open. But um, you can right click on those and add to, um, well, I, I, I use 7-zip or whatever, so we can add to archive, right? So you can, you can zip them up. I don't think you can do that while it's running. Let's just see. Probably not. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, uh, uh, I would have thought no different, I guess. Um, so now um, I have a zip file that has those files in it and it's ready to email. It's only, how big is it? Six kilobytes, so that's really good. Vector data compresses really nicely. Of course, it's only a few lines, but yeah, there you go. So it'll zip and ship pretty easily. Okay, so once we're done with that, um, send and um, we'll. She only needs one of them, so that's, that's all right. So it's a class project. That that's it. That's all we had to do. The next thing to do is go back to the campus part of the drawing, turn on the imagery, and we're going to look for the missing buildings and we're going to draw those in. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I forgot to mention. So yeah, we'll turn it in in Canvas. How about that? You can turn in your zipped file, your zipped shape file in Canvas. You want everything to be lock file, right? The lock file? No, no, no. Everything. Not the lock files. No lock files. Right. No lock files. What class are we in here? That's the assignments, right? So I'll add this as a, another assignment. And this will be um, let's call it SJC lots. Um, Okay, that's that's good enough for now. Um, and I'll restrict to a zip. I'll make it do Monday. Oh, and I need to add the file. I'll do that. Yeah, and and so um, I'll just save it as is, and then I'll add that file in a minute. We don't have to waste our time any further on that. Yeah, so right, right. So um, now we're going to go to create from the edit ribbon and we'll pick the buildings. Now we have slightly different tools here and um, we can see which buildings need some updating and stuff. And there's lots of good tools here. So I'm just going to use the polygon tool for now, but the right angle tool will help a lot too because a lot of these buildings are at right angles. Uh, but the like a, the gym over here is not. So um, let's just use the gym as an example. So it's just a plain um, 
editing exercise here. So I'm ready to draw at this point. And so it has some curves in it. It has some good, you know, just, I, I just want the footprint anyway. So um, let's start at the top. Now on an aerial image, you kind of want to use the ground, right? So I don't want to go across the roof because, you know, some parts of the roof are higher than others. But if I can find the ground, such as the corner of the cement slab here, that's probably good enough for the footprint. So I kind of missed that, but that's, that's okay. We're gonna, we can adjust those too. In fact, if you hover over that, you can just kind of move it. But then it'll start snapping to itself. So move it away and move it back. Don't be afraid to zoom in. And then the red uh, uh, vertex will show you the last place you clicked or the, the current vertex, I guess. Yeah, this one's a little tricky too. Um, so we're just gonna go around the edge because you can't see the bottom. You can see where the image is kind of blended. So I would just make that straight. And clicking around. Okay, so now I get to this point where um, all this is, is kind of folding on itself or whatever, um, but um, you can kind of tell, you can see through it a little bit. If you go to the view menu um, and click on this layer, oh, appearance, I'm sorry. And uh, we can make it somewhat uh, more transparent, right? Come on, Slater. So now I can kind of see through it as I draw uh, much better, depending on the color and whatever. So just pick a good transparency that you can see. Okay, now getting back to this. Uh, so I just clicked around the corners, just click, click, click. Then I get to this point where I have uh, a rounded edge. There's a couple things you can do. You can just ignore it and just go to the other corner, or you can just change your tool to an arc segment, okay? And the arc segment allows you to um, um, click on the, I think the end, uh, not exactly. So let me undo that. Is it gonna let me undo that? Yeah, it, it, it's a three-point arc. I, I forgot, I guess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I can click and then undo. There we go. And then I'm still on the arc tool, so I just click somewhere on that and then on the end, and that makes a nice arc. And then I can switch back to the line tool and then go along my merry way. Let's go around the concrete building. And then here's another nice arc. So now I'm cutting this this other um, edge off uh, because I have another plan for that. So now I can't really see through that, but that's okay. And up the transparency. Oh, it knocked it down again. Oh, because I hit undo. <laughs> Go around the horn. Pull that away, put it back to where I think it should go. I'm 
almost there. And then I'm going to talk about the Kiva Center over there, the Kiva conference room that I just kind of ignored. So I'm somewhat guesstimating where those um, some of those corners that weren't necessarily that's uh, probably good. Enough. Okay, and when I'm done, F2, right? And it draws the shape. Okay, so pretty much got it in one step except for the Kiva Center over here, and so I want to talk about that. Is everybody all right so far with that? Any questions? We got. I'm going to go over it a little bit. I can help as needed. Let's take a look at the um, some other base map data. And one data is imagery, right? So I can just look at just flat out imagery pulled off of Esri's server. World imagery is what they call it. It's under base map. And it's not as clear but it's probably a lot faster than the county's higher resolution data. So yeah, if I try to zoom in on that, I can't really tell. If you, if you want to compare, we'll turn that on. And, yeah, yeah. So here's the county's imagery, and and here's the... Is it much clearer than it was? <laughs> If you wait long enough, yeah, it'll it'll do it. Okay, so um, I'll wait for that to turn off, and then we'll um, we'll we'll talk about drawing uh, multiple features here. So starting here, and I'm going to use a circle, and um, I think I can just draw that circle kind of at the center, and even if I'm not, well, that was actually pretty good. A little off. Yeah, and if I want to move it, I um, I can. It already kind of finished it, so edit move. I could just kind of drag it, try to get it a little bit better centered, and then finish that. Okay, let's say that's good enough. Now, I also have like a square I want to draw, right? So I'm going to use a rectangle and just going to go to the corner, to corner. And then square that off. There. So now, uh, we'll just start with this and then, uh, well, actually, um, I'm going to go back to just the regular polygon and I'll go ahead and finish this off too. I'm just going to draw this polygon and I don't really care where that goes inside that because it's going to go away in a minute. You know, I'll just do, I'll just do that and F2 to finish. So now I have three shapes, right? So with the select tool, I'll hold the shift key down and select the circle and I'll select the, so there's all three shapes that I drew in there, right? Then um, there's a couple tools here and one you can see right here. I think that's one we want. Uh, yeah, merge is what we, there's actually two. Uh, there's a union also, which does something else, but it, that's not in here. <laughs> so merge is what I want to do. And then I have to tell it you know, what I want to merge into, like which features do I preserve, right? Actually, it doesn't matter for, in my case, I don't care. So um, I'll just click merge. And then it joins, merges all those shapes. So I have one more to do here. So after these are merged, I could have just selected this one too, I guess. And uh, maybe I want to preserve this guy here or this guy here, but it doesn't matter. I can just preserve. So what you're preserving is are the attributes, right? The ID number, the object ID, and any other kind of, like if I'm going to be naming these buildings and stuff, I might have wanted to keep the name, whichever feature had the name of it or something. So that's, that's all I mean by that. So. 
So yeah, the next building, um, you know, let me turn off my world imagery. It's kind of hitting. <laughs> the next building, the health science building is, um, it's mostly right angles, right? So if I can set up my first line, um, this would help. Let's see, let's create, and I'm gonna use the right angle tool, right angle polygon tool, I guess. So um, yeah, I can start, there's lots of little nooks and crannies here, but let's just make it easy and start Start on this corner. Yeah, I can't really tell. There's a corner. Maybe I'll go this way with it. So now it's forcing it to uh, go at right angles, so it'll follow that building really nicely if they constructed it nicely. So I can actually click right at this corner. And that forces that to happen right where it should. I'm going to pause the recording. Gonna have to follow the rooftops on this side of the building because I just can't see. That does step out a little bit here. You'd think if you zoomed in more, it would have fewer pixels to refresh, but it doesn't seem to matter. It's just as slow. And even my browser is locked up. I'll just turn that off. And I'm recording on Zoom as well. So that, yeah. Maybe I'll just pause for a sec. Yeah. Buildings don't seem to be at super right angles here, but We'll just make them right angles. And if it's way off, which it's getting a little off here, um, you can edit the vertices, and that's um, something I'll want to talk about in a minute. And then at the end here, we can, uh, I think you can just right click, square and finish. See how they did that? So it squares off the last corner and finishes the thing at once. So 
yeah, I might want to adjust some of the, um, I don't know, I kind of like it. Maybe I missed some of those, <laughs> that part. I thought that was just a sidewalk, but it's casting a shadow, so I'll edit. So here's a, here's a chance to edit some vertices. So uh, we can click on the, in the tools area, there's an edit vertices. With that building selected, we can edit the vertices. So in here, I think uh, I needed to pop some, I need to add a vertex here, so I can right click, add vertex, and right click. Um, well, maybe I wanna move that up just a teeny bit and add another vertex here. And every corner is gonna need an extra vertex. I could have redrawn, right? I could have just drawn another shape around it or something, but this is also um, a viable way to get these shapes in. Yeah, that's probably better right there. Okay, F to it. Yeah, good enough, good enough. Get the idea. Yeah, that's actually pretty accurate because I just stood up. Here's some good work here. So perhaps um, I wanna move the whole thing. Now, um, without having to use the move tool, I could, um, Can I drag around? Yeah, see how I can select all the vertices? And now if I just, uh, um, I could move one and it moves the whole thing, right? So I can just move this over a little. There, F2. Yeah, uh, close enough. Maybe it needs to go over a little bit more. I could use the move tool for this. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe, can't really see a good corner. Yeah, something like that maybe. Let's try that. Okay, I think I'm satisfied enough with that, sort of. Okay, so um, here um, we can reshape. We can use the reshape tool. And I'm gonna click on it. And the reshape tool allows you to, I'll just demonstrate real quick. Uh, um, I can start at this corner and yeah, I'll probably go to that corner. That looks like a shed really. So I'll come across. I'll not add that to the list. That probably goes under there a little bit. And I'll come back to this one and then I can F2 and it, it just adds what I draw at the time to the existing shape. Now, I don't think I could have done that with that gym, but um, that, was, that was pretty good. Now, that vertex doesn't look great. So, I'm gonna just move that in and this one out. Make it a little squarer. I'll try to edit some of that. Okay. Well, I do my circle in there, then I add the square. It's the way the circle. Okay. Um, I'm going to use that reshape tool some more and just keep adding to parts of this building. Um, I could turn on my edge snap and my vertex snap, and that could help. And I probably would want, I'll just do that in F2, and just add corners to the buildings. Snapping along the way.
Yeah, maybe I'll use the right angle tool at this point. <laughs> Now I don't need it. Okay, F2. I should add to that. I think that was it. Okay, so those are some of the tools that we can use. Um, and we're going to just go around the campus and um, add to uh, what's missing. There's actually quite a few here. We have the Outdoor Learning Center. We have uh, the addition to the ITC building. The Internet Technology Center. Anyway, um, that's what we'll do um, for today and the next period, I think.